guys. Welcome to Hey Grill Hey. I'm starting it out this time. I'm Todd and this is Susie. And today we've cooked this delicious hunk of roast beast, better known as prime rib, with Susie's special garlic butter prime rib recipe. Yep. Tell us about it, Suze. If you want to nail a smoked prime rib this holiday season, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to have it turn out perfectly pink, deliciously flavorful, and like over the top insanely delicious. You'll nail it your first time, I promise. Let's do it. All right, let's get started on our smoked prime rib. Before we do anything else, I need to make sure that you guys buy exactly what you want at the butcher's counter. So we're gonna talk about this beautiful cut of beef for just a second. Now, a prime rib comes from the primal cut of the rib. This is where ribeye steaks come from. The whole thing is about seven bones and can weigh up to 30 pounds. I generally cook a smaller roast that's about 10 pounds, usually four bones, and I have my butcher cut it mostly off the bone for me and tie it. Your butcher can do this for you too. If you don't have a butcher that will do it, you can do it yourself super easily, just with a little butcher's twine and a knife. You can also buy prime rib that is boneless. I definitely recommend cooking bone on. Not only will boneless change the timing for this particular recipe, but I love having the bones to eat. I kind of like my secret little snack that I munch on while I'm waiting for the prime rib to rest and slice for everybody else, so I leave mine bone in. Every grade of beef is going to be a little bit different in terms of the marbling that you get inside. That's this beautiful white intramuscular fat. The highest grade you can buy is prime, and you will pay a pretty penny for a prime grade prime rib roast. It's worth it if you're celebrating something like a beautiful special occasion. This is a choice roast that I have here, and it is going to be absolutely delicious. I'm gonna let this sit out for about 30 minutes to an hour while I prep everything else get the smoker rolling. I'm cooking this on my Camp Chef, 225 degrees, and I'm using a mix of oak and cherry wood. I like the bold flavor of oak and the color I'm gonna get from the cherry. At 225 degrees, I plan about 35 minutes per pound for a bone-in roast. And once you hit this 10 pound maximum, it's really not gonna change the time at all. So if you do have a 30 pound roast, you're not still gonna do 35 minutes per pound and end up cooking this thing for 15 hours. At 10 pounds, the roast is gonna get longer, but it's not gonna get wider or round. So it's really not gonna change the cook time. The longest you're gonna spend on a roast like this is about six hours, even if it's a big one. Because you're, again, it's width, not necessarily length. And now we just gotta prep the outside of it. We're doing a garlic butter crusted prime rib, and it is as delicious as it sounds. The first step is to season the outside of our prime rib pretty liberally. I'm going to be using my beef seasoning. This is a great salt and pepper based seasoning, or you can just go with equal parts, kosher salt and cracked black pepper. For our garlic butter crust, we're gonna start with a cup of softened butter. We're gonna mince eight cloves of garlic. We're also gonna add in two sprigs of rosemary, a couple sprigs of thyme, and you wanna make sure these are really, really, really finely chopped. Rosemary you can get a little bit woody, so chop it really fine, add it to the bowl. a good stir. Make sure that the herbs and the garlic are equally distributed throughout the butter. So in my family, it is not Christmas unless we have prime rib. Every Christmas Eve since before I was even born, my parents have done prime rib dinner at their house on Christmas Eve. So for me, this is like ultimate nostalgia and those awesome family Christmas memories with a giant hunk of red meat and there is nothing better. Butter's mixed, it's time to get it onto our prime rib. I just like to use a rubber spatula because I can spread it on there. You don't need to be too thick or too thin. You just wanna be able to not really see any prime rib, prime rib peeking through the butter. Mm-hmm, it's kinda like frosting a giant meat cake. 
Once our prime rib is covered in our garlic or butter, it's time to get it ready to go out onto the smoker. I have a baking sheet with a flat cooling rack. This is like a cookie cooling rack, but it makes the perfect roasting rack in your smoker. Right on top, and we carefully transfer the prime rib over. This is going to allow the smoke to really get around the meat itself, and we're going to catch all of those beautiful smoky, buttery herb drippings to use later. Very important. Now, this is going out onto our smoker. Like I said, 225 degrees oak and cherry wood. I'm gonna be inserting a thermometer into the thickest part of the meat itself. 35 minutes per pound. I figure this is going to take about five to six hours for the first part of this cook. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how we finish this off. Our prime rib has cooked to an internal temperature of 120 degrees. This is not our finished temperature, but as you can see, it's taken on a lot of beautiful color. It smells fantastic. We're gonna pull that off and we need to let this rest for a couple minutes. And what's happening is I've increased the temperature on my grill outside to 400 degrees. So you can do this next step in your oven. You can do this next step on a normal gas grill or a charcoal grill. This is the searing step. This is the step that gets us a beautiful, crispy, dark exterior bark and that perfectly cooked pink interior. So we're gonna let this set for a couple minutes while the outside heats up. We gotta focus on these beautiful drippings right here. Now this is just all of that gorgeous butter that has rendered off of the outside of our steak. We've also got some of those really nice beef drippings in there. We wanna separate out any of the herbs that have maybe turned a little bit dark at the bottom of this pan and reserve this flavored butter. You can use this to drizzle over the top of your prime rib once it's finished, or you can use these drippings, heat them up, a little bit of flour and some beef stock, and you can make a really nice au jus. Our target temperature for this second half of the cook is 135 degrees. We're just about there, so I'm gonna pull it off it looks so good. Guys, my family is gonna love me today. <laughs> this is perfectly cooked, fingers crossed. We used all of our thermometers. We're gonna cut this open and see what it looks like. After you do that final high temperature roast, you're gonna have these lovely, crispy, garlicky edges. We've got our beautiful browned butter right here. It's time to serve. So I usually, Come right along the bones right here and take off that twine because nobody wants to end up with an accidental piece of string in their slice of prime rib. And then I actually cut the bones away from the roast itself. Makes it easier to slice and whoever likes to eat the bones can have a little treat. It gives you a nice flat platform for slicing your roast. So you can cut these bones individually. I feel like this is usually the time that Todd wanders into the kitchen <laughs> and asks if we're ready to eat it. And I get to hand him one of these ridiculously beautiful beef ribs. What's that? <laughs> Did the hair on the back of your neck yeah. stand up or something? My spidey sense. <laughs> Does your meat sense tingle? Oh. My goodness. I mean, those are just a treat in and of itself. Those are ridiculous. And now, the piece de resistance, Todd, is this beautiful smoked prime rib. Now, you can cut your slices as thick as you like. We usually take ours probably three quarters of an inch thick and then people just really like to fight over that end piece. But you can see it's beautifully pink on the inside. You've got a lovely hint of a smoke ring around the edge. This thing is so juicy. <laughs> like Todd's tear. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then once you have it all sliced just before you serve, just drizzle each piece with a little bit of that smoked butter. Yeah. And if you want to, 
This is indulgence. This is this is indulgence. This is a holiday meal. If you want to, you can actually sprinkle each piece with a little bit of a, like a flaked salt. Boom. 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 How was your rib? Uh, it's good. That was good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So you can taste that initial layer of the beef rub on there, the salt, the pepper, the garlic. But then you really get that herb garlic crust. And it's got like a nice little crunch here on the edges. This is one of your best ever, baby. That was so good, you guys. So tell the people what they need to do. Do your prime rib right. That's what you need to do. Go to heygrillhay.com for more recipes like this, but Follow this recipe, this garlic butter prime rib. It's off the charts. Oh, so good. <laughs> so, I just need a minute. <laughs> you guys, our whole purpose is to help you feed the people that you love and feed them in the best way possible. And for us, that's barbecue, slow smoked, wood fired food, all the way. Our whole goal is to help you make better barbecue so you can feed the people that you love Become a backyard barbecue hero. You can get tears of joy and snuggles and kisses from the people you love when they eat food like this. It's an indulgence. It's delightful. You should have this on your holiday table. Amen. <laughs>